Hey Art fans, Butch Hartman here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell button. That's a lot of buttons to hit. And uh, if you hit those buttons, I will uh, be very, very grateful. Thank you so much. Also, if you guys want to get a drawing from me, click the link down below and I'll do you guys a commission. That means I do a drawing just for you. Okay, we're doing an episode today of Tuna. What is Tuna? It is my new show, my new segment here on the Butch Hartman channel where I talk about animation, entertainment, and those people that make that stuff. And today we got a very special guest. In fact, before I announce the guest, uh, hello, hello. Special delivery for Mr. Hartman. Oh, wow, it's it's a mailman from the 1940s. Thank you very much, mailman from the 40s. Ooh, look at this. <gasps> Gasp. It is a box. Ooh. It's a box with things in it. What could it be? Let's check it out. Ooh, my goodness gracious. I love, first of all, I love the design of the box. That's very cool. Very nice. This is, ooh, it's heavy. This thing, this thing weighs, like, a lot. Like, do you see the bicep? Is the bicep happening there? Do you see the... Look at that, the muscle. You see the Butch Hartman muscle happening, no? Cameraman, is there a muscle there? Nope, not, real. not at all. Come on, really? So look at this, very cool box. We open that up. Oh my gosh, you guys. Look at this, I love this. This says it's a big, crazy sack of goodies. Look at this. Very cool. In the, in the sack of goodies is, wait, let me open the sack of goodies. Oh wait, there's also an Earthworm Jim poster. Look at that. Can you see that on the camera? Look at that Earthworm Jim, beautifully hand painted. Wow, I love that. This must mean that our box has something to do with the creator of Earthworm Jim. Mr. Doug Tanapple, that's right, he's our guest today. But one second, oh this is so cool, this bag of goodies is awesome. There's like a comic book in there and there's gum and there's a patch you can sew on your jeans like in the 1970s when you rode your Schwinn bicycle, yes. And uh, oh, I love that. Also, well this is awesome. This is awesome. This is a graphic novel by my friend Doug Tanapple called Bigfoot Bill. Look at that. That is just awesome. Very awesome and this is actually a book no downloading required. If the power goes out, I can still read. If, if I had light, I could still read. I could get a candle, no power required. Okay, so Bigfoot Bill, that's cool. And oh my gosh, this is awesome. Look at this. This is just great. An awesomely beautifully illustrated Earthworm Jim. This is an Earthworm Jim graphic novel. Let me open this up. Oh my gosh, that's great. Beautiful. Launch the Cow by Doug Tanapple. Look how beautiful that is. The front cover, the back cover. Just amazing, just amazing. And oh man, oh man, there's another one. There's three books in here. A second Earthworm Jim, the making of Earthworm Jim. Look at that, all nicely done in plastic. I love that sound. Oh, this is so cool. Beautiful, look at that. So I got three books by Doug Tanapple. Two Earthworm Jims and Bigfoot Bill. I don't even know what Bigfoot Bill is. I've got to check that out. But those books are beautiful. The box is amazing. The presentation is awesome. You know, I'm friends with Doug Tenapple. He and I worked together at Nickelodeon for a while. I was making Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom in my shows. And Doug came in there for a while making a show called Cat Scratch. And Doug is just amazing. I love his work. I think you'll love it too. If you uh, remember back in the 90s, he did a cartoon called uh, Earthworm Jim. It was a video game first, then it was a cartoon. Doug just sent me some brand new animation to watch. So let's check that out right now. That was amazing animation. Have you guys ever animated a fight scene before? It is not easy to do. It's not easy to storyboard. Definitely not easy to animate. That was killer. I can't wait to find out how he did that. Don't you guys like the way I uh, cleaned up my desk in those 30 seconds? Look at that, amazing. All right, here's our interview with Doug Tenapple. Doug Tenapple, it is a man, an honor to have you here, dude. It's good to be here, buddy. It's uh, I'm just a big fan. I've been a fan. We've known each other for a long t 20 years. Dude, I know. And it's funny, uh, at Nickelodeon, we so we crossed paths many times. Yeah. I never had time to hang out because you get so busy working on shows, you know, you have no time to do anything. Yeah, I always saw you, but you're always you always look like this. You always had just a big pile of X sheets and model <laughs> sheets under your and you're always going up and down the stairs, just busy. I, but, I, like, I'm not to gonna talk to that guy. He's got somewhere to go. Dude, I mean, and I, you know, you know the drill back in the day, everybody does Toon Boom now and everybody does digital stuff. But back then, I think there's still people that do sheets anymore, but 
that was a real, it was a real make or break situation. You had to get them right. Yeah, and they were, uh, were they doing your animation? Was that in Korea? Because they did Cat Scratch at Final Draft in Korea. Yeah, well, they did. Mine was at uh, Fairly Odd Parents and uh, Fairly Odd Parents was at Yesan in Korea. Uh -huh. And then uh, Danny Phantom was at um, Rough Draft. It's Rough Draft. In, uh, yep, Rough Draft. That's the one, not Final Draft. Final Rough. Draft's the writing program, Rough Final Draft. Final Draft, a whole different thing, exactly. And Doug, I woke up this morning to a very awesome surprise. I got these amazing books in the mail. Look at this. Oh, look what you got. Dude, this is incredible. I mean, I, I'm, uh, number one, extremely excited, and I'm a huge fanboy. And then secondly, I'm very jealous because I don't have any giant graphic novels that I've drawn. Well, we'll, we'll get you started buddy can i let me ask you this I, I i first of all there's so much to talk about with you i've got a whole god I, I just looking you up and i already know a lot about you but just looking up your list it's i know we don't have 15 hours i only have a few yeah. few minutes here but i okay let's just go let's go right to the big thing let's go right to uh, earthworm jim sure so, with earthworm so that when did that start in 94 1993 i created it the video game came out in 94 and that's back when there, there were video games. They're all home consoles, though, right? It was a home console game. Yeah. And yeah. it just got re-released on the Sega Mini. Uh, it's, cool. a, it's a little, you know, it has a bunch of games already coming out on it. So that old game is available today. But um, back then, yeah, you buy them. It came on a cartridge. It was like less, than, less information than what you'd get like on a floppy disk or something. You know, yeah, it was yeah, like totally. a tiny amount of information. And uh, it, was, it was Sega, right? It was a Sega game. This was Sega and Super Nintendo. Uh, Super Nintendo, we ported from the Sega, but you know, there was so little space to put your animated frames on that cartridge. Everything was reverse engineered and designed to have the drawings go on and off that thing onto the screen. There's a, you know, it was all pixelated. It was like a certain number of pixels by a certain number mm. of pixels. And the technology was the big, you know, now nothing stops frame count. Yeah. But I, well, I, can, I, yeah, you and I grew up when um, Atari was the big thing at home. Yeah, that's Atari. right. I had a twenty six hundred. I know, and who would ever have thought Atari would go away? I remember in the movie Blade Runner, there was a big Atari sign, you know, and it yeah. was just so funny uh, that they just collapsed. But um, you know, I loved Atari. But I mean, even Earthworm Jim, I'm sure, looked fantastic at the time. Did, were you happy with how it looked at the time? Yeah, at the time, it was known as a very animatory game. And that's what we were trying to do was to be more, bring in a little more kind of Tex Avery over the top, goofy right. cartooniness to gaming because everything was eyes, so stiff. Eyes popping out and things. Eyes like popping out and, right. you know, pants falling down and just being, being silly, you know. You and I both have pants on for this interview. I want everyone to know that. By yeah, way. even though we're both wearing black, <laughs> so we matched wardrobe, but we are we are also both we wearing. We planned that. Well, dude, so Earthworm Earthworm comes out. Uh, I would a pretty big hit, right? Because there was an Earthworm Jim Two came out, right? They had a sequel. Oh yeah, the sequel Earthworm Jim Two was the next year, so that would be ninety five. Dude, that must have been awesome. And then like then then. I know everybody wants to know this. Do you make, and you don't have to go into actual figures, but do, did you make money when you sell a video game like that? Oh, very little. Seriously? Very little. So um, compared to what like modern people make on um, licenses, license agreements, because this was my first thing I ever created. So I, you kind of get, get the short end of the deal on those first creations. Sure, and <laughs> I was definitely, right. but I mean, I was well compensated on the salary you know, and, uh, yeah, you know, as an animator on the job. And then just, I got a little something extra as a royalty on the character. Mm, so okay. Okay. it, I can't, you know, as an artist, you can't complain really. I tell artists all the time. It's like, I, they'll go, well, I don't want to do that. They'll steal my idea. It's like, well, no, I think it's kind of cool. You sell your idea and you get to have, you know, the idea out there for people to enjoy. And yeah. And that's another thing for the, the up and coming creators I could have held on to Earthworm Jim and it never would have made it as a game. And then it never would have made it as a cartoon and a toy line. And Earthworm Jim has opened up every door since then. Yes. So course. would you rather have a hit or would you rather own your idea so you don't get ripped off? I know. I tell people it's better to have like 30% of something than a hundred percent of nothing. That's right. And, and so, but I, 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 there's so much to talk about here so we could, Talk about the development of the game, which I'm sure was a whole, it was almost like animating a show, I would imagine, right? Yeah. Storyline, characters, all that stuff. Yeah, and we would, 
we would draw it on um sometimes we used even 16 field animation just like the movies but we we just to save money we had our own three hole punch you know the slots that are for animated paper and we would punch our uh xerox copy paper did all the in fact i in fact i have one of the earthworm gym drawings I don't know if I have a sequence go. here, Look at this. but actually this is from 93. This is him on the rocket that I drew when I'm not going to, I can't really flip it right now, but this shows him on the rocket when he's chasing Psychro. And so that's from a, 1993. And it's, this is a like drawing this. I did in 93. <laughs> so here's a, uh, oh, look, here's, here's a good one too. This is uh, Professor Monkey for a Head. These are my actual drawings. His name is Professor Monkey for a Head. And his monkey has a monkey <laughs> for a head. So you can oh, you see. A, that's killer, dude. I love that. The sequence here. I, and they, they flip. You know, I, back then we'd flip them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, we would scan it clean, and then clean it up with the pixels in the computer and had our own whole system for it. And, that, and that's all. We were just animation lovers who were also video gamers. Yeah, I was going to say because. You know, most people out there right now, even today, uh, you know, a young person sitting at home is like, how do I sell a video game? I mean, how do I even go? I guess it's, just, it's just, how did you sell a video game? How did you get this to those guys? Well, it, times are different now, right? right. Um, back then, it was just, it was way more open. It was the Wild West, like the front end of video games before anyone knew any better. Mm -hmm. So they were like, what new character do we want to come up with? Well, nowadays... You know, it all goes through corporate. There's mass. I would, I would never make it today if I started in games. And that's why I would tell fans today who wanted to make a video game, you should make your own independently. independently. Oh, oh, you mean like, like right now? If you're going to do it right now and you want to get into games, I mean, you should create your own character and put together an independent game team uh -huh. of uh -huh. a tiny amount of people. And don't go for a big giant, you know, PS4 you know, like uncharted, you know, like a movie budget of 500 million or something. Yeah, I know, I know. Do something small that you and your friends can do like a phone app or something. And that is the future. Same reason why I'm doing my comic this way. Same reason you're doing a lot of independent animation on okay. YouTube now. Mm -hmm. You just, you don't, I don't want to say you don't need a studio because I still love studio work, but there's nothing stopping you now. There is not oh, a gatekeeper true. keeping your show out, your game out, your comic book out. Mm -hmm. Like Five Nights at Freddy's was kind of a homemade game, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. And that's, uh, that's a fellow Christian who created that too. Well, look uh, at, and it was just a little indie thing he made and it blew up. Yeah, Five Nights so at Freddy's. cool. Let, and so much to talk about here. Okay, so um, from Adventure Time, now, now you worked on Adventure Time too as a writer, am I correct? I did, just... This was, at, so Penn Ward was one of the kids that would bring me his drawings at, at Comic-Con. Will you look at my drawings? I'd go, oh, Penn, you need <laughs> did you, to. Did, where he, did he have a hat? Was he wearing yeah. a hat? Oh, yeah, with a big, I go, Penn, uh, you, you need to learn how to figure draw. Rebecca Sugar is another one that would talk, who did uh, Steven Universe. She'd right, come right, up, right. I have her, her comics, her little handmade comics that she hand printed herself. Oh, my God. And would, at Kinko's, and she'd bring me her copies. And they were amazing, by the way. Her okay. books were amazing. Mm -hmm. So these were like my kids, you know, I would go like, I, I was huge fans of their work way 10 years before Adventure Time came out, or five years before. And then, uh, so Penn, I, I saw, we both pitched our shorts and you did shorts. Didn't you do, also do shorts? You did Fairly Odd, Fairly Odd Parents with Seabird. Fairly Odd Parents was a series of shorts, yeah, in the late Okay, 90s. yeah. So yeah. that was all Adventure Time was, was through Frederator. He yeah. pitched, I had a two shorts I did with that program. And then Penn did Adventure Time and Nick passed when they on screened, it. When they screened Adventure Time as a short at Nickelodeon, they had a whole audience because Fred had a whole audience coming, like 50 of us. And it was hysterical. It was I so was in there. Funny. I was we were roaring. In the yeah, it was and I said, so funny. this is something amazing like I've never seen before. Yeah, and I could and, never... I normally get jealous of people that make yeah. things, but I wasn't even jealous because I couldn't even think like that. I'm like, I can't even think like Penn Ward. It's the same as with SpongeBob. It's like you see this thing and you're watching history get made and, and you feel like you're trying to catch up with greatness. You're going, I'm trying to get this thing, but I haven't seen anything like it. And then in Stimpy was the same thing. It's like, I well, haven't I seen anything like it. I know. And then when Toy Story, like to when Toy Story came out, same, yeah. like the same exact thing. Well, that's so you wrote for so Penn paid you back by letting you write some adventure. Time. Yeah, I was hard up for work, 
and uh, I was I, I I ended up begging him for I go you got anything? He goes oh yeah we we're starting the show, Adventure Time over at Cartoon Network, and they had me come in and write. This is back before it was like a year before it came out on Cartoon Network. Right, right, right. They had me write uh, with Joe Horn. Joe Horner? Joe Horner? Oh, Joe Horn. I know Joe Horn, yeah. Joe sure. Horn. Yep. He, he wrote half of an episode and I wrote half. And that's when they were having the board artists like write the episode. They'd give you like just a few sentences. Yeah. So I wrote this epic plot with Abe Lincoln. And, <laughs> and it was and they ended up canning everything that we did on that first six months on Adventure Time. So by then I was moving on to something else. Sure. And then it wasn't until probably season four that he did the episode Sons of Mars and they used enough of my material that he gave me a screenwriting credit four oh, years later. Cool. That's cool. So that's how the, all I mean, that happened. But yeah, it was really I, neat. And watching Penn, who's just like a great guy and a great artsy guy. Sure. And Patrick, you know the the whole the kids, and they're like walking around so geeky and goofy, and <laughs> and the execs are trying to rein them in, and they don't know, you know anything about business. You know, they're just they're just like they just love the art. I try and I try and talk to young people all the time, and I'm sure you do too. About you know, yes, you want to be an artist, but be a business person too. Yeah. Because you do once you once money starts getting exchanged, you want to be able to make sure you get you know the, the proper compensation for what you're doing and, and even like ancillary rights and things like that and royalties and all that kind of stuff it really can add up you'll learn it the hard way if you don't learn it it's unfortunate the easy way. you will learn it sooner or later <laughs> so so wait so you also dude you did the neverhood which was a stop motion yeah. uh what, what was this what was the neverhood that was a clay animated video game for dreamworks that was the first thing dreamworks green lit mm. that got released Wow. So we were the first, re so we started in 95, came out in 96. And that was all, I was a big Gumby fan growing up. I'm, I've always been into clay and stop motion animation. Here's, here's a puppet. This is what, this is Clayman, one of the main Very characters. Good. And we were just do, trying to make that. like fine art in video game form. And uh, Microsoft put it out. It got bundled in all these computers. Terry Taylor did the music who later worked for me on Cat Scratch and Veggie Tales. You know, he did music. He's always done music for me. Right. And it was just, uh, you know, it was weird. It was a weird game. <laughs> it I know. Dude, I know. I, 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 it's funny. I, before I met you, I encountered everything you did. I just, I saw Earthworm Jim. I saw the Neverhood stuff. I saw... You know, I, I knew you at Adventure Time, but like, and then you come to Nickelodeon and you show up around Nickelode Nickelodeon when I was there with, for Cat Scratch. What was it, like 2007 ish or so? It was earlier than that because it was done by our production was done right around 2007 on the second season. So it was okay. probably 2004. And then and the four? premise of Cat, okay, 2004. Okay. And because Cat Scratch was uh, the premise, I believe, was a bunch of cats that win the lottery. Is that what it was? Well, uh, they inherit a bunch of money from their their crazy old uh, old uh, yeah, owner lady. who dies and okay. gives them gives them all her millions. I like so, that, and that was based on a comic book called Gear. Yeah, it was called Gear. That's right. There's another title for it. That's right. Yeah, that was my first graphic novel, and so it was Claudia Spinelli who brought that into Eric Coleman at uh, Nickelodeon. Dang. And uh, Margie Cohn was working there then. And yep. they just said, you know, we like these three cats. And what a, that's probably one of the best, probably the best TV I've ever created that's was cool. it's that. A funny, it's a funny show, man. And is it Peter Hastings was our showrunner who did Animaniacs. Mm -hmm. uh, the voice cast, you know, Rob Paulson, Wayne Knight. Kevin McDonald, John DiMaggio. Wayne Knight, uh, Newman from Seinfeld. How can you Newman from Seinfeld. He played Mr. Blick. He was <laughs> just, cr he was crazy amazing. And the villain in Jurassic Park. Oh my gosh. I mean, and the villain in Jurassic Park, which I did the video game for Jurassic Park back on the Genesis before. That's what I heard. Now, are you doing video games now? Is that what you're still kind of doing? No, I'm, 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 now I'm just doing comics. I'm doing indie yeah, you're comics. Doing the comic. Now, let's talk about the comics. So in the box today that I got, I highly recommend everybody go get this. If this is Bigfoot Bill. It's backwards on the Zoom, but I'm going to show up. Yeah. Got it. But the, the box I got, which is beautiful, uh, it's from um, your, your production company, Earthworm yeah. Productions. And it's got two gorgeous Earthworm Jim books in there. 
And then this book, Bigfoot Bill. Tell us about Bigfoot Bill. If you guys can see this right here. So Bigfoot Bill is uh, about a, a Bigfoot who steals the finger of Poseidon to gain control of the Kraken, and he wears him as a super suit. Well, of course. Why wouldn't so, that's that's an obvious story, John. So his there's eyes and mouth on his chest that talk to him, and it's about all these cryptozoological creatures like Loch Ness monster and unicorns and Poseidon, and they break out of this facility in LA in the middle that's of the beginning LA. of the book. I saw that at the beginning of the book. That's yeah, the very that's start. Really cool. So this this goes into what I've been doing now is crowdfunding my own comics. You can look up Bigfoot Bigfoot Bill Two on Indiegogo, and to me, this goes back to animating your own cartoon, which I want to get into crowdfunding our own animated cartoons yep. online, yep. is um, just having no studio and just having the freedom to go directly to the fans and say, do you want this to exist? If you want it to exist, then come in and let's make something together. And you don't have to raise as much money to work frugally with a virtual studio with animators from all over and sound guys all over. Just like your episode that you did with, was it Kit and Caputle? What was that? Kid and Caputo, yeah, my friend uh, Mike, Milo, Mike Milo, yeah. Which I, I just think that's the way to go in the future. You, you can do what you want. You find out if the audience wants it or not. So yeah, and me, you crowdfunding is the way to go. There is nothing stopping you from creating your own stuff now. So when you do, so the, the Earthworm Jim graphic novels are gorgeous too. How long for you to draw, I mean, to write, draw, and produce something like this? Was, all those artists out there want to know. Yeah. Like, how do I make my own graphic novel? So that one is 160 pages. Gosh. So... Great. I do a, at least a page a day. So I'll give you an example of, here's a penciled page that I'm working on today. I'll check that I don't out. know if you can so see anything cool. on there, but there's, a, there's, yeah. a, there's Bob and number four, the cat holding a globe. And this one, I started the inks on these legs down there. Oh, I love it. And then I erase out the pencil lines and I do an ink wash on them. So you can see here's a fish ship flying over this farm oh, that's town amazing. below. Oh, that's so cool, dude. And I scan it, and then my colorist lives in the United Kingdom, and she colors it. Mm. And we take those 160, those digital pages, so they're, they start regular, and then we scan them. And then I talk to my printer, who's here in Tennessee, and, we, uh, and they do all the yearbooks in America. So they're, they specialize in hardbound printing. Yeah, because this cover, uh, that, that just adds such a cachet to this, man. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? The, the go now, that's something I had to learn is how to print is – Gold leafing, so you'll see embossing is when they push the text in and debossing of raising it out. Oh, yes. You Two different colors of foil. There's uh, all that becomes just a new discipline to learn, a new business for me to learn. And here I am, 53 years old, learning a brand new mm -hmm. discipline to make that book. But to me, the printing is part of the artwork. That delivery is just a unique art form sure. that I'm really turned on by the uh the design of it and just it's part of the entertainment is like you want to start giving them a wow factor from the time they open well, that yeah box. this makes you want to grab this book and especially in a day uh, in today's day and age where everything's digital you want to get a great book like this yep. especially a, a, a graphic novel now so 160 pages a page a day and that's assuming you do one page every day never missing a day that's four months yeah. Raw. And then it takes for the same amount of time to color. So what, about a year to do this? So you're about a, um, a, a little less than a year, about eight months total. And I'm working on multiple books at the same time. So wow. okay. that like the last two years, I've done 320 pages a year. Oh, dude, that's amazing. Some days I'll that's do two. That's so inspirational, dude. I just love that. And the book is just beautiful. Uh, Butch, you got to do it. I'm telling you, you crowdfund a book. We're well, going to get you on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. I, well, real... I did a Kickstarter a while back and we did some, we raised money for uh, something else. I, was... I, I remember that. I, and I, that's what I'm all for. I, I just think, um, I think it's, it takes some bravery to go to your audience and say, do you want this? Yeah. If you want this, then let's make it. And, and it's going to cost you each person, maybe 20 bucks or whatever you're going to ask. The thing that them. I went out for is a streaming service we're starting and we still yeah. need much more money to start it. And yeah, I remember that. And we're getting that. It just, um, and, it's such now, a, and that happens all the time too, Butch, in your defense, that happens all the time where you ask for a certain amount of money. It's not enough. You have to go raise more or there's delays that happened on our game, Armacrog, which on this one, this guy, which I animated with the Earthworm Jim animators, it's all clay and puppet animation. 
Love it. We raised nine hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Wow, dude! And we were a quarter million short. It's like the animators went into debt. We were about to lose our houses. Oh. And the audience was furious with us, and that happens too. Is yeah, it just it's a normal part of crowdfunding. Sometimes you make mistakes. Usually. You know, you, you pull it off, but sometimes we, we, you can, we, you can guess wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know. We raised, we raised our money that we went for, but then we obviously still needed way more that was not going to be possible on a crowdfunding thing. So we were still going for it too, but we're excited. Listen, I love, I love interacting with the audiences. I know you do as well. So um, you're, would you call yourself an artist primarily? I would, you're probably an artist primarily, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And you do, but you do write, you do everything. What I love about you and, and, and people like you, is that you're not just the artist. You didn't just stop as an artist. You were, you were a video game designer, a stop motion animator, a writer, a show creator, and now you're doing your own graphic novels. And I just love the fact that you're doing this. And it shows that anybody can do this. If you really work hard and want to do it, what, would you, what advice would you give to young artists out there? It, it really is about that hard work. It's that everyone wants to be an artist because it looks easy. And you know this, that we're the hardest bosses on ourselves that mm -hmm. we'll, than anyone could ever be. We're mean, hard bosses as far as <laughs> we, yes. you, you work yeah. morning to night, you work harder than anybody else on the crew. And, and that really is the key to getting out of your rut. If you want to make something, you have to work harder than the next guy. So mm -hmm. put the hours in. And this is like the ant, you know, moving that whole ant hill one stone at a time. Mm -hmm. It's more important how much time you put in it every day across a year than how well you perform, say, for two weeks and get burnt out. It's not about that. So pace yourself, have a plan, and most of all, be disciplined about your art. It's not just I draw even when I don't feel like it. And a lot of times as an artist, right, we're very tied. It, it, it's very close to our heart and our person. It's very emotional. And sometimes you just don't feel like doing it. And that's when the discipline kicks in. Or like when you work out. If you, if you only work out when you feel like it, you may not be as consistent. That's true. And you won't get the results. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm like you and I both love what we do. And any artist loves what they do. And that's so right. If you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work anyway. Uh, but sometimes it is a lot, man. You're doing three books a day and, or three books a year and then producing them yourself. Dude, it's a lot of uh, keeping track of stuff, I would imagine. My God. Yeah, and the business side of it, I'm still, I still have a tough time with. You know, that organizing. I always have my little, I carry my little cal sketchbook calendar with me mm -hmm. and I mark out my days of what I need to do this week and I oh, make yeah. sure that I check off those boxes. And then I have uh, my assistant over there, Mr. Phillips. He's at that computer <laughs> back of his head. Is he, real, is he a real human being? He's a real human being. Mr. Uh -oh. Phillips is a real guy. He just, he's graduating high school this year. Oh, nice. And he like, he'll answer the emails on Indiegogo to make sure that my customer service is up to snub. So if someone has a question mm -hmm. or an address mm -hmm. change, we can take care of those details. And then, um, but it, but it really is about chasing details that I'm not so good at as an artist. I'm real good at like creating wacky stuff is easy. Writing things is easy. Drawing is easy easy for me right you fall out of bed and you draw yeah totally but uh the business side and like talking to printers and signing contracts and estimating budgets and things is uh, i learned a lot of that from animation on cat yeah. scratch and earthworm gym so i learn i'm learning along the way but it's not my first discipline sure sure well i mean i'd love to talk even longer while we're gonna kind of wrap up here yeah where can people find you and get all your cool stuff where do we go Sure. Um, look up Doug to Naple on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, which you're welcome to like, click like. Um, but more importantly, look, look, just go to Indiegogo and look up Bigfoot Bill 2 and just look at it and see if it's something that you like. There because you uh, there it is. And we love, we how, book, we love the animation. Two. Yeah, the, oh, real quick. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the, you know, the animation that we watched. Uh, we just oh, watched, yeah. Yeah, the animation of Bigfoot Bill fighting. Is it a Yeti he's fighting? That no, the blue guy is Poseidon, so oh, he's Poseidon. got scales on him. It's a big kung fu fight that was animated by uh, Seb uh, Woja. He's an animator at DreamWorks. On uh, he's uh, he's been working on it. He does it in his spare time, but he's a, his main job is to work on Boss Baby. But he's just a friend who just wanted to do some animation for me. Well, it's and really the sound cool, design right? is by my friend Justin Spurlock. Well, we loved it. It's, uh, we have uh, those of us in the studio watching. It's so cool. It's only like 30 seconds long. We're like, oh, God, there's got to be more. So we got to see more of that. 
I maybe if I crowdfund crowdfund a Bigfoot bill, sure. All right, man. I would. I think the audience would love to see that, guys. So uh, hey, well, Doug, and I want to see what the audience makes. And if you guys want Butch to make a comic book, <laughs> then let him know in the chats. Like the episode and let him know in the chats. We demand a book. Yeah, I know. I got I got this show called Elf Detective. I might make a book out of that. You never know. Hey, man, but I've learned, dude. I am. If I do make a book, you're the first one I'm going to. What do I? Where do I start? How do I make this? Happen? I'll I'll give you a step by step, buddy. I'll walk you through it, and it's a heck of a lot less work than animating because you're not doing 24 frames per second. You're just putting the meaty parts down. You're just drawing the meat. Yeah, just all about the story too. Hey man, uh, yeah. well Doug, thank you man for being on. Uh, I can't say enough good things and thanks for being so awesome. You're a great example and dude, thank you. Again, thanks for these amazing books too. I will send the check. Oh, I'll send enjoy the them. No, God <laughs> bless you, man. You're such an inspiration to me that I love giving back. So I hope you, you and your family will love those books. It's a blast. Thanks man. Well, thanks for being on. We'll have you back, okay? I will. I'd love to come back on. I'll have you on my show too. All right, man. We'll see you later. God bless you, brother. Thanks, Doug. Bye-bye. But. Man, Doug has just done so many cool things. I hope you guys understand how inspiring of a figure he is. He's not only a towering figure, he's a, a tall guy, but I mean, he really just works hard. He's a towering figure in just what he does in the industry, how many things he's done, how many things he's still doing, and he just never stops. I kind of like to be that way myself. I like to keep going. As long as there's a breath in me, I'm always gonna create something. And I want all of you to do the same thing. I don't ever want you to stop. Just because the first thing doesn't work out doesn't mean you gotta stop. The second thing might be the thing that works out, or the third thing. Doug sold Earthworm Jim as a video game and unfortunately it was successful. And so then he went to selling those other things and just keeping things going. You even heard him say he was out of work for a while and took a job writing on Adventure Time. And stuff like that is what we have to do. Not only to keep our creative juices flowing, but to keep a paycheck coming in sometimes. When you're working in Hollywood, shows begin and shows end. Do you want to be someone who works on someone else's show and is uh, always waiting for them to give you a job? Or do you want to be someone who creates their own job and creates their own opportunity? You can be either one and you can be a mixture of both. Bottom line is you're all creative. You all have a creative spark inside you, and uh, I'm just excited to see where you take it. Okay, without further ado, let's get into drawing one of Doug's characters right now. Okay, here we are. We're going to draw one of Doug Tenapple's most famous creations, Earthworm Jim. I've never drawn Earthworm Jim before. It'll be a first for me, so here we go. But again, everything is very basic. Keep everything simple, and you'll always do well. You can add the details later. Okay, so Earthworm Jim is basically an earthworm in a giant muscle suit, right? He's in a big uh, space suit, so his eyes are very big. So we'll draw, like, eyes first and uh, make sure that... Uh, I know he's kind of got an angry eye over here. But again, very basic, ovally type shapes, right? Kind of connected, there's no center line that separates the two. I know he's always in kind of a uh, fighting mode, Earthworm Jim. So there we go, there's his eye. His head kind of comes back like this. Almost like in a very like, uh, one of those old 1850s sleep caps, I guess you would say. You know, we remember those, they're super popular. Just read the nightmare before it. <laughs> <laughs> Just read The Night Before Christmas. Okay. His head, yeah, his all eye there. His, all of his eyes, his eyes cover his whole head. This goes straight down. And then his mouth is just sort of, you know, very simple shape there. But the eyes pretty much take up everything. And I know the one eye, we'll color this one in and sort of add a uh, bigger pupil around it there. So there we go. That's Earthworm Jim's face, and let's get to his body. So his face is just, you know, a very simple shape, sort of, uh, you know, again, it's two simple circles like this, and it basically comes back like this. And that's really his head, just two lines. And then you put the mouth in, several lines for the teeth, eyes, and there you go. So that's a simple way to do his head. And now I know his body, he's basically an earthworm in a suit, so, the suit is just a normal uh, filled out sort of uh, human body superhero thing. So we're gonna do some big, you know, big chest muscles here. He's got big shoulders, I know that. Big rounded shoulders, right? Uh, he's got some kind of a ray gun, and I love the way Doug draws ray guns because he draws them the same way I would draw them. Kind of just uh, uh, 1950s retro guns. And so the gun is sort of a, uh, you know, cone shape, you put a couple of lines on the top of it. There's always that little 1950s Flash Gordon front that comes out. Now don't forget his fist that's holding the gun. You know, his, uh, he's got his fingers here. I think he has uh, four fingers, right? So, there you go. 
and uh, his chest comes down and then his muscles are just huge like this. I know he's got a couple straps across his chest because that's what all good space rangers have, are straps across the chest, holding something on the back, no doubt. And, all right. And so his forearms are very huge. Muscles very huge right there. So that's sort of Earthworm Jim right there. We'll color in a little bit of his neck piece here to kind of give the, uh, the effect that the suit is hollow. Yeah, and there's Earthworm Jim. And again, his body is made up just of simple shapes. Straights, curves, a barrel chest, kind of like a Buzz Lightyear thing and just big muscles. The muscles, again, you know, the chest is like this. It's just a barrel shape like that. These lines come down and separate the chest. The, the shoulders are big round lines like that. That's my version of Earthworm Jim. Let's take a real quick look at just a very simple version of how to draw this character. Again, keeping things very, very simple. I'll draw a smaller version here. Okay, so two eyes. Head goes back like this. Head comes down, head comes down. Round circle for where the neck protrudes from the suit, right? Uh, the neck of the suit and then just the body. Barrel chest. Everything is tubes and cylinders. You know, cylinder for the waist, big shoulders, tubes for the arms. Here's some more tubes here. Round uh, fists, right? Add the teeth in there. Legs are also tubes. Almost like a doll. It's like you'd get an action figure doll. All right, and there's the feet. He's got very big feet, so I do the feet too small. But that is the basic way to draw Earthworm Jim. Very simply, there's this chest line there. It's very simple. I know I did, I did it quickly. I've been doing this for a long time, but follow these basic rules. It's very simple. So there you go. There's Earthworm Jim. I'm gonna sign my work, Doug's work. But it's my drawing. My drawing, but I just signed that for the heck of it. But hey guys, you can you can create a character just as cool as Earthworm Jim if you just stick with it, you know? Stick with your imagination. Stick with your belief in yourself. You know, like Doug said in the interview, it's so easy now to do your own thing, your own cartoon, your own show, your own video game, your own graphic novel. You know, back in the day when he and I were younger, there were just big companies that were around. And, and if you could get into those big companies, you could maybe get something made. But now with the internet and with YouTube and iPhones and having a mini television studio, in your pocket with your iPhone or, or your, your cell phone, you can you can do anything. There's really no excuse not to get your work seen now. So the only thing stopping us is us. So don't be stopped, don't be afraid. Every artist once in a while, finally, at one point, has to put their artwork up on the wall and let somebody judge it. Don't be afraid of people not liking your stuff. Because you know what, some people won't like it, but maybe somebody will. All right guys, I wanna thank Doug Tanapple for being on the show today on Tuna. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Who else should I get as a guest? Let me know down in the comment section. If you guys wanna send me some animation to show on Tuna, Tuna. I just might have you on the show. But your animation has to be family friendly with music and sound effects. Don't send me something that you know, isn't really finished. I want to see things that are as close to finished as possible. And if you want to send it to me, send it to askbutchhartman at gmail.com. That's askbutchhartman at gmail.com. And I'm so excited you guys came today. Tuna, no fish. No fish, right? Uh, we have bait. Worm joke. I like that. He's also my mailman from the 1940s. Thank you so very much for being on the show today. Uh, oh, why, of course, there, sir. Exactly. 23 Skidoo. The Yanks have won the pennant. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And don't forget, art and earthworms give you power. Use it wisely. Do you think earthworm Jim can worm his way out of any situation? I'm in the frozen pose, I can't answer you. Hey Heart fans, subscribe here to keep up with me, Danny, Timmy, Dudley, Bunsen, and the Noob Network, my new app full of cartoons, shows, and games. Download it here. Click over here to watch my most recent video and here to start a playlist related to this video. Whoa, check out that awesome fan art. To be featured here, use hashtag heartfanart and tag me. I'm on every social media platform known to man. Cartoon Butch out. Pencil drop. <laughs>